Okay, let's talk about my beloved Boston Celtics after I have given myself enough time to mentally recover from the uh, conference finals loss to the Heat. And I know that during some of those post-game reactions, I talked about the future of the Celtics a bit, but this could be the dedicated video about it. And we'll get into the boogeyman known as the future CBA and all that stuff. But uh, let's just start with Jalen. And pretty much all the writing on the wall says their plan is to extend him this offseason. I mean, Brian Windhorst said yesterday pretty much that. Zach Lowe on his podcast today had a very small blurb about the Celtics where he just said, no, I don't think that they're in the news for a big trade or whatever. You've got like reporters who are very close to the Celtics who cover Mass Live who have also said, yeah, they're active in trade talks for like fringe stuff, but no big name stuff. So I think they're going to re-sign Jalen Brown. And I understand the complications of what it can mean down the road between Basically, if you're $17 million over the tax line, then it becomes you can't increase your salary in a trade. You can't use like your taxpayer mid-level or whatever. Like it gets difficult, I know. And I've already said in my post-game reactions in that series, like, yeah, I want Jalen Brown on the team long term. And yes, of course, I'm biased here. I've watched almost every game the guys played in the league. And this is with a contract that would be paying Jalen over $50 million a season. But the alternative, which would be to trade him, and this offseason at least, it just doesn't seem like there's anything out there that would actually make you better, at least based on how the rumor stuff looks right now. And so the other possibility, if you were going to move him, would be to take a step back, get cheaper, get more assets and all that stuff, even if you're still getting like a very good player, but one who's probably not as good as Jalen. And that just doesn't sound fun at all to take a step back as Tatum is about to turn 26. I understand he's going to get paid a whole lot of money and it's going to be a roast session the second it happens and it's going to be, oh, Jalen Brown can't dribble and all this stuff. I would say Jalen Brown is an inconsistent ball handler. He can pull off moves. He can pull off between the legs dribbles. He can pull off around the back stuff. He can also dribble the ball off his leg or get stripped by Bam in the corner or Jimmy the second he catches the ball. It's the weirdest thing. He also needs to improve on his decision making and, you know, coming around screens and, oh, that guy's open in the corner. This guy's rolling to the rim. I understand all this stuff. Like, I get it. Jalen's not perfect, but... So anyway, about the money stuff, hopefully not beating you over the head too much with numbers here. Pretty much... If they give Jalen Brown a contract where he's making north of like $55 million per season or whatever it is over five years, next year it doesn't really matter because he's still on his regular right now contract. However, after next season is when it starts to get interesting because then you start getting to where your guard rotation are starting to near the end of their contracts even if they're not there right now. And then 2026 is really when it starts to get interesting because that's when Tatum's contract would begin and that one's going to be like 60 million a year or whatever it is to state the obvious the salary cap and the luxury tax will also be going up as these years go by and the other thing too another obvious one like you can still re-sign guys if you have their bird rights like you can give them an extension and all that it's just a matter of how expensive are you willing to go of course outside of Tatum and Jalen and uh, then you got to come to a decision on the guard situation and speaking of those three I mean look I think Derek White was the best of those three this season I mean, he was all defense, second team, well-deserved. The three ball is the best it's ever been for him. And he just has that sort of like give and go, give and cut immediately off the pass energy that this team just desperately needs sometimes. Brogdon, I mean, he had the third highest usage rate on the team while playing less minutes than other guys. So it was definitely a, when I'm in the game, I'm running the show a bit, which they needed. Like they needed that extra ball handler. And then with Marcus, I mean, he was a little worse defensively this season, even so Still a positive defensive guard, obviously, the heart of the team, all that nice stuff. Also, the fact of Horford's contract will be up by that point. And listen, I love Al, and the fact that he's been able to go this long is commendable as hell. But if he's still good at that point, I mean, he'd be, what, 40 years old at that point? Like, okay, man. Uh, Time Lord, he'd be on the last year of his contract at 13. Like, yes, definitely some decisions to be made, and it would not surprise me at all for the roster to be different around Tatum and Jalen. But I would still rather sign up for that because, I mean, is this going to be a hot take to say, like, they probably both have not hit their ceilings yet. And I want to talk about that more in a bit, especially potential improvements for Tatum. But I want to get to the front court. Look, Al, he's old. He does what he can. I mean, regular season, he knocks down threes, playoffs. He still holds up well defensively. But dude's old. He's not going to be around forever. Time Lord has a minutes thing where when he's out there, when he's looking at his best, and he's the rim protector, lob threat, offensive rebound guy, the help defender, or the center. He's great. But it doesn't happen all the time, right? And I'm not saying I want him moved. I like having Time Lord on the team, especially on the contract he's on. It's just more so like they're going to have to get some more front court stuff eventually, and it might have to be more than just like Luke Cornett for 10 minutes a game. Now, within that, I do feel like they would prefer the sort of like set screens, play defense type of five, as opposed to the like give me the ball type of fives. Take that for what you will. 
They've also got most of their first round picks to trade in the future. And no, I don't think they're going to make like a massive shakeup at center right now. I think they're going to ride it out with Horford and Rob, but just down the road, it's something kind of waiting for them. Let's talk about Tatum for a little bit. Of course, love the dude. He's one of the best players in the league and all that stuff. Uh, he's made improvements with his handle and his decision making coming around screens. And of course, you know, especially two playoffs ago, they really leaned on him as a pick and roll ball handler and all that. I'm assuming he's going to keep on improving at that stuff. The mid-range game is in this weird spot. I know in the playoffs he had moments for mid-range, but for the most part with him, it's like, well, you're not that great. Your percentages for mid-range are just not that good, but also we want you to develop this side of your game. So it's this weird thing where, like, yeah, if he could step into next regular season shooting 48% on pull-up twos slash floaters while still maintaining all of his improvements, attacking the rim, drawing free throws, and then everything he does from the three-point line, that'd be great. I just don't know if that's realistic to ask for. The other thing I'm hoping for is just a constant something within Tatum and Jalen to be doing something off the ball, whether it's screening, hell, sometimes on the ball, because they were doing some of this like beginning of this previous regular season, like screening on the ball, just getting a lot of like off ball screens from the corners that allowed them to flow into something. And I get it. If teams are switching on defense, then it can make it a little tougher to do this stuff. But just that sort of constant for them motion. I'm not asking you to be the Warriors here. But just enough to where the half-court offense doesn't fall into just the very stagnant ISO bad shot selection stuff that it became in their worst parts of this season, right? Of course, you still give Tatum and Jalen their more simple actions, too. Now, yes, the one thing with Tatum and Jalen together is because they play similar positions, any action involving both of them typically results in a switch, so it's not like they can just screen for each other. I understand this. At the same time, what the hell are you going to do? Are you going to trade Jalen Brown for a player not as good as Jalen Brown who can screen for Jason Tatum? <laughs> like, no, I'd rather just have Jalen Brown. But yeah, look, this offense can't fall into their worst habits. We all know this. And some of that's on the coaching staff, with which Joe Mazzulla has now got Sam Cassell, as well as Charles Lee, added to the staff. So they've already beefed that up a little bit. Like, it shouldn't be forgotten just how quickly a very good coaching staff with Yudoka and Will Hardy and the whole thing just became, hey, Mazzulla, you're the head coach. And also Damon Stoudemire left in, like, the middle of the season or whatever. Besides all that, look, Gallo's coming back, and he sh should be able to give them, hopefully, some sort of inside scoring slash his, like, weird post-up mid-range stuff that he does sometimes, if he can still play like that. Grant Williams is a free agent, we'll see there. I mean, Missoula didn't really like him that much, even though he can guard bigger guys and make open threes. So yeah, look, I know there's a lot of angst, I guess, around the Celtics, because it seems like they keep getting almost there every single season, then something goes wrong right at the end, but... It's not easy to get to this position where you have two really good players in their mid-20s and you have, what, a conference finals, game seven loss, a finals loss the year before. I just don't think you do some drastic, like, we gotta switch it up for the sake of Twitter. 